Today, we will discuss the use and effectiveness of technology in behavior management. We'll start with Swiss Suite. Swiss is a web-based school-wide information system that is used to collect and summarize student data. These data are then used for decision-making. Information from Swiss is often used during tiers one, two, and three of a school-wide PBIS program. Swiss helps educators and administrators make school-based decisions and support plans designed to meet the needs of both individual students and their families. SWISS allows schools to review school-wide referral patterns and define behavior patterns in greater detail. Let's take a look at SWISS Suite. Hey team, so this is a quick video on SWISS. Um, basically, you're going into your SWISS Suite and clicking down on drill down or view reports. Uh, depending on uh, what, what data you are loading, you'll probably go into view reports, go into your school summary, and then go go down. Um, and here's the big, you know, here's the big five. You've got your location, you've got your problem, behavior times during day of the week, and, and your level as well. Um, they also do quite a lot of specific stuff, uh, cross referencing, cross referencing, uh, things like referring uh, referrals by staff, uh, school ethnicity data. Um, quite cool yeah um so when you click on say the school report for example it'll give you the uh, averages per month uh, you can hone in in terms of the referral type you can go into your major minor here and generally speaking it's pretty easy to generate um if you're getting really really stuck with your swiss data um what i suggest you do is click on the tutorials um yeah, I mean, it's it's, really, it's quite good. Um, you can also look at the data as numbers, um, not on a graph, so as a table. So this is quite good because this kind of tells you what proportion of the incidences happen and where as well. So, um, yeah, you can, you can actually look at, say, for example, if you've got a school of, say, 620, um, sorry, uh, uh, incident report size of 620, you can actually, you can actually see, um, you know, around 53 percent are coming by the way of the classroom. So then you might want to drill down into specific classes or times of the day. Um, looking at the times of the day, I can see a bit of a pattern emerging around, in this data set anyway, uh, around lunchtime and uh, coming back. So this could be a transitional uh, period in here. Um, anyway, um, this is just a demo from Swiss. I also do a range of different reports. Um, let's have a look at one of the problem behavior reports multi-year. So this is across the school, especially if you've got um, a range of students coming through. This is a good comparison tool for your set. Information derived from Swiss Suite includes the top five as pr the presenter spoke about, referrals by location, referrals by problem behavior, referrals by time, referrals by student, and referrals by days of the week. Additional reports include referrals over multiple years, referrals by staff, suspensions and expulsions, and referrals by school ethnicity. It is important to pay close attention to school ethnicity to ensure there is no racial or ethnic disparity in how consequences for challenging behaviors are being meted out. How is this information being used? Referrals by location are often used by a tier one team. They are used to review, revise and reteach expectations school-wide related to specific locations. An example would be the challenging behaviors noted in the cafeteria. Referrals by student are often used by tiers two and three. They are used to determine small group interventions such as social groups and individual interventions and supports such as check-in, check-out, two by 10, 
and Referrals for Special Education. And that is Swiss Suite. Next, let's take a look at electronic behavior management programs. Electronic behavior management programs are applications that can be accessed via smartphones, computers, tablets, etc., and that assist teachers in managing his, her, and their classroom. Electronic behavior management programs often have built-in systems for praise, both specific and or contingent, offer feedback on students' performance, allow for group contingencies, and contain digital token economies. Let's take a look at a few electronic behavior management programs, starting with Class Dojo. What makes an amazing classroom? Is it having shiny new desks? Hmm, is it that fearless classroom pet in the corner? Or maybe it's something you can't see. Maybe it's about the classroom community you build with students, teachers, and parents. In a classroom where students all work together, persevere through challenges, and help each other out along the way, these moments should never go unnoticed. This year, you'll be using Class Dojo to celebrate those moments in class and share them home. You'll each start with your very own monster. And any time you show an important skill, like working hard or being creative, your teacher can award you a point on Class Dojo. For those extra exciting moments, your teacher can take a photo or video. Best of all, your parents will get to see all the skills you're building and share in your unforgettable classroom moments. So let's get started. What skills do you want to recognize in your classroom? Next, we'll take a look at Score It. Teacher, the teacher clicks on the teacher icon, goes to Score, finds Allison, and then finds Whole Group Instruction for the activity. Clicks on Whole Group, and now it's time to score Allison's behavior. Was she safe, responsible, and ready? If I want to remember those definitions, I can simply click on the words and the definition pops up. I'm going to score her on a scale of zero to four. Um, zero being never, one a little, two sometimes, three a lot, and four always. So was Allison safe during class always? Was she responsible? Hmm, sometimes. And was she ready? Did she have all materials and begin tasks immediately? Sometimes. So then as the teacher, I click done. It takes me to a scoreboard where I can see the percentage that Allison earned during full group instruction. Uh, the check at the top near the green icon, that refers to the teacher and it's checked there because the teacher is the scoring priority. If I go to done, now it's Allison's turn to rate. So she clicks on student, she finds her name, and now she's gonna rate, how did she do during full group instruction? Uh, she, was she safe, was she responsible, and was she ready? Allison sports herself a three for all of those. And then if she wants to view the teacher score, she can click the little icon at the bottom, the little green person, to view the teacher scores. At this point, this is a good time for the teacher to provide some feedback about the scores and maybe how they compare. If the student did a good job, the teacher may provide some behavior specific praise. If the, two, if the student didn't do as well, it's an opportunity to provide some constructive feedback um, and make some corrections for the next instructional activity. Once that's over, and it should only take about 10 seconds, you can click done, it takes to the scoreboard, it's done again, and now you're back at the initial login page. So as you transition from whole group to a different instructional activity, once that instructional activity is over, you go through the same process again. So the teacher can go first, hit score, find Allison, and now let's say they just got done with um, independent reading. So we find independent reading icon, do the same thing, hit done, 
And now it's Allison's turn to rate how she did during independent reading. And she did pretty well, although the scores don't match the teachers. So again, a good chance to provide some feedback and hit done. Now, if the teacher wants to um, view a graph, she can simply go to graphs, find the student, and then there is a bar graph indicating how Allison has done for the day. That updates in real time after every instructional activity has been rated. Um, and then the horizontal line represents the goal. So Allison's initial goal was set at 70%. So far, she is meeting the goal at 71%. This is a good um, tool to use to provide Allison with some feedback and also to track progress over time. So if the teacher sees that the student is not meeting the goal, then it may be that the teacher needs to provide some additional reinforcement or maybe the goal was too high, maybe they need to lower it. If the student is consistently meeting the goal, then maybe it's time to raise the goal and make it a little bit more challenging. Another option is to for the teacher and the student together to look at charts and that's where you can look at uh, the percentage earned for each behavior and for each instructional activity. So again, the teacher has multiple options um, to score, look at scoreboards, look at graphs and charts, and also to make adjustments in the settings. The student, however, only has the option to score, and it does not matter who goes first, the teacher or the student. So that concludes the manual for Score It. Other information can be found on the website at www.scoreit.info. Next, we'll take a look at Live School. Every day, your kids are working hard and engaging students is a top priority. With Live School, you can instantly award students points for the great things they do. When you give a point in live school, you can leave a comment for other teachers to see. That way, when students rotate classes, teachers can see how students are doing before class even starts. Live School's parent app means that moms and dads in your school will have continuous feedback on their student. Students get their own app too, showing them their feedback from all classes and updates on your school's reward system. Paychecks are another powerful way to engage students in behavior improvement. Kids can't wait to get their paycheck because it shows them how much they have earned and how much they have saved up. It's easy to create a reward system so that students can spend their harder points. Just add rewards like school store items, pizza parties, and more. Then charge students when they want to make a purchase. Live School will automatically update student accounts. Access powerful data about your students, team, and school. Work together to reflect on school-wide progress. Use Live School dashboards for more productive parent-teacher meetings and pull detailed documentation in a printer-friendly format anytime you need it. Let's work together to track, reward, and improve behavior this school year. After using each of the electronic behavior management programs seen in the videos in a study, Benjamin et al. suggested that teachers who are looking for ways to implement positive behavior sports using contingency-based programs may want to consider electronic behavior management programs. They also found that electronic behavior management programs have proven effective in decreasing undesirable behaviors and increasing desirable behaviors when programs are carried out with fidelity. Note, replacement behaviors must still be taught and reinforced. Electronic behavior management programs are easy, effective, and efficient ways to collect data on both behavior and goals. Noise level meters are a tool many teachers find useful. Noise level meters help teachers and students control the level of noise in the classroom 
and throughout the school. If students' noise level rises above what has been deemed an appropriate level, the noise meter indicates the level of noise in real time. Background graphics also appear, reflecting the student's noise level. Let's take a look at the Too Noisy app. Meet Tracy. She's a second grade teacher. There was a time when her noisy classroom had her taking aspirin regularly for headaches, but that changed when she found Too Noisy Light, an app that provides her students with entertaining graphics that let them know when their voices get too loud. When mirrored to a TV, monitor, or projector, the students can see it no matter where they are in the classroom. Tracy really enjoys being able to adjust the sensitivity, allowing her students to be louder on occasion. Her students enjoy the app so much, they bought Tracy the Pro version. Now her class can choose background and dial themes and record their own warning message. Tracy really likes that the app awards stars for voice control and removes stars when they are too loud. Be like Tracy and provide your students with an entertaining way to learn to control their volume levels. Download Too Noisy Light for free or Too Noisy Pro for less than a bottle of aspirin. Available for iOS and Android. Behavior trackers are valuable tools to use when collecting data. Behavior tracking apps are effective and efficient ways to collect, track, and analyze students' behavioral data. Let's compare two such behavior tracking apps. We'll start with Behavior Tracker Pro. Another great app that I like to use um, to collect data, mostly on behavior data, um, for a lot of different behaviors that your students might display. I like to track it. I like to graph it. I'm kind of one of those people who really pays a lot of attention to that. And a lot of times you lose the papers or you get interrupted or things like that. And this is a great way to house some of that information as well as automatically analyze it. It gives you several options. The one I use the most is the take high frequency behavior data. You click on that. You can click all of these are fake students of mine. We'll pick test student. It asks you to select an observer. Both your students, when you go back there, you can click the plus button to add a student if you don't have them in there. Um, you can add observers, add a different teacher if you want to take. Maybe they take data on the same kid as you and you can compare. Maybe you, um, they have their own set of students that they want to use it for. So they'll click me. And now I can pick which, what are the behaviors that I really want to track today. They might have a really hard time transitioning between recess and coming back. They might have a hard time transitioning or staying on task during a group. They might have a lot of ref refusals for tasks that are not preferred. So you might pick off task. Uh, maybe they refuse a lot and maybe they need a lot of redirection. So we'll click those three behaviors. You can choose as many as you want. Once you get more than three to five, then it gets really hard to consistently pick the behaviors that you're seeing, especially if it's a student who's really acting out. So we'll pick those three. And then they, there is a running um, time on the top. When you click the blue button, it'll start your time. And this is pretty like observational things you, you might be watching. Every time you see um, one of these behaviors, you just touch it. It'll automatically keep track of the frequency as well as um, how often it's happening is in intervals and maybe it was happening a whole bunch in the first part of the observation and then they've um, been able to calm since then you can see that as well when you graph it you can the only thing that is kind of downside of this is that you can't add a behavior if it happens to occur during your observation it'd have to be a new observation so we'll say we'll done we're done we'll pretend that's 36 minutes instead of 36 seconds tap to finish it takes you back to the beginning you can then take some um, ABC data, which I don't use a lot um, as far as using the app for that. It will give you the option to start recording and you're going to double tap it when you see um, a behavior occur. It'll give you some possible antecedents. It might be they couldn't do something, they were interrupted or transition. We'll say it was a transition and they um, got really upset and they were kicking. We click done. And this is the consequence, the C part of the ABC. What did someone ignore the behavior? Where they assisted? And all of these 
consequences can be specific to your student or your class. We'll say they ignored the behavior. And then you can go back to recording again. And the next time it happens again, you can do the same thing. Double tap. They wanted something this time. They couldn't have it. They were swearing. Done. And they had to be physically guided to comply, which probably wouldn't be the choice, but I didn't see those up just yet. Go back and continue recording. When you're all done, you hit triple tap the blue bar. And it goes back to the beginning. You can take frequency and duration data again. On, we'll pick the same student, you can do the same thing. How many times you start and stop, but it isn't as specific. Here's the behavior. They were flying. I'm done. Go back. It doesn't have all of the ABC data, but it would do a good job of um, documenting the frequency and duration of a behavior. Some things that I like about this is when you can go to the bottom, it says analyze data and you can choose the student and then you can choose all of the charts, the ABC data and charts, the high frequency data and charts. Um, we'll just pick all of the data. You can also pick on um, one day over the course of many days. Um, we will pick, um, we will pick those sessions. You want a summary from all of those. Here it will give you each of the sessions, the time it was observed, how many things you were seeing during those times, six seconds, they were swearing, all of this behavior data that you just took on the other screens. It'll summarize it for you like that. Or it will also give you the option um, to graph it. And that saves me a lot of time when I have the option to graph them. This is the all time summary in the bottom. It says graph. And then it'll tell you each of those colors are specific to um, one of the behaviors that we saw. Also, how many times it occurred it is also being graphed. And then on each day, how many times it occurred there. This is something that you, you could very easily print out, bring to an IEP meeting, do your progress reports with, um, or just share with a parent. Next, let's look at thread learning. Thread learning is a tool for data collection and analysis. It's replacing a paper process that happens throughout the school day or at clinics with a clipboard and with data sheets. Let's click thread. We're currently looking at the curriculum of BS Skinner. BS Skinner is a demo student that every thread user has access to. It allows users to try out new features of thread without affecting their actual student data. Today, we're gonna to run the program, identify colors. As you can see, He's working on the targets orange, green, and brown. And his program was last run earlier today. By clicking on the curriculum, I can view additional details about it and edit it. By tapping the circles on the left-hand side, I can activate the curriculum and add it to my drawer at the bottom. Let's open the drawer. The drawer is probably the UX element that our users appreciate the most. Not only can I run group programs or interspersed programs, but it's flexible enough to allow users to organize their day in any way that they want. Less experienced users tend to set up a day's worth of work and then go line by line by line. Power users prefer to do work in batches. Each user can organize the order by dragging and dropping. Each time BF Skinner answers correctly for identify colors, I press a plus and each time he answers incorrectly, he gets a minus. Before I had to pick up a pen and paper and write this on a paper chart. But it's easier to press a button, especially if I'm using my hands to interact with the child. For demonstration purposes, he got 100%. After the program is complete, this data point will appear in real time for every caregiver that works with BF Skinner. Unlike competitor software, I can run thread offline and it will sync automatically as soon as my Wi-Fi returns. If I want to view the results in the chart, I simply click BF Skinner's score. As an instructor, I might take thousands of data points each day. So with paper, I used to have to spend 30 to 45 minutes a day simply charting data points and analyzing. Thread does the charting for me. It even has specific industry attributes like the dotted line, which some call a phase change line. If I want to zoom in on a particular data point, for example, the one we just did, 
I can select it and I can add a note, see who took the data, or if I'm a supervisor, edit and delete the data. I can also print the graph in just two clicks if the rest of the school is still using a paper process. Unlike competitors, Thread even analyzes the data for patterns. These patterns can be custom set by Thread users. But the default is to look for instances where the child isn't learning as fast as he should or when the student reaches mastery criterion. Let's log into a supervisor account to see what they see. So the supervisor also has access to BS Scanner, but they have a bell in the top right corner and it has an alert. So if we look at the chart for that alert, we can see that the demo student met mastery criterion for listener responding. You can look at the phase, edit the phase, and let's add a new target. They mastered subway, they mastered car. Let's add the new target, train. Make it a current target, save the phase. Thread always asks me when I make a change to a program if I want to create a phase change line. This time I do. So we create a new phase. And as you can see on the chart, a new phase is created and staff members can once again use the program. If we go to the supervisor's drawer, we can see that Thread also allows users to do task analysis with the program Unpack. Users can do forward chaining, backwards chaining, or in this case, total tasks. If for some reason a task can't be completed today, a user can skip it by pressing NA and it won't affect the score. Thread also lets users record target behaviors in two clicks. From anywhere in the app, even if you're in the middle of a task analysis program, a user can click behaviors and add frequency data. Thread is currently finishing up development of full and partial interval data, momentary time sampling, and duration data. Graphing applications are a great way to save time. Graphing applications are effective and efficient ways to create progress monitoring graphs. Let's take a look at ChartDog GraphMaker. Chart Dog Graph Maker. First, create your account on interventioncentral.org. Click Create Account. Enter the information requested. Create a chart. Click Chart Dog Graph Maker on the Intervention Central home screen. Set aim lines. Here are Johnny's reading fluency goal and present level of performance in this area. When given a grade level reading passage, Johnny will read 130 correct words per minute in two out of three trials. Strengths reads 100 correct words per minute on a grade level passage. Click Aims. Create a custom aim. Fill in start value and end value using information from present levels and IEP goals. Add data. Create a new entry. Add data and comments. Note that the date is put in for you, but it can be changed.
analyze data and enjoy. Talk with students about their successes and what they need to work on. Encourage them to keep working towards their goals and make adjustments as necessary. Share data with parents by printing or through email to keep them informed. And that is Chart Dog Graph Maker. Visual schedules are a great way to provide structure for students with and without disabilities. First then, visual schedule applications provide such positive behavior supports. They are beneficial for people with communication needs, developmental delays, autism, and or those who benefit from a structured environment. Visual schedules increase independence and lower anxiety during transitions between activities. Let's take a look at two visual scheduling apps. Unfortunately, People First Language is not used in this video. About what about ChoiceWorks? Um, so ChoiceWorks is an uh, an app that can help kids. Uh, with their um, completing their daily tasks, uh, understanding emotions, um, there's questions on there. It, it can help them with improving patience. You know, so ADHD kids or kids who have low frustration tolerance, meaning they frustrate easily, yeah. um, it can help teach them patience. Okay, I like that one, the timer. I think that's probably really easy for kids to understand. Right, right. Um, how to cope when you're upset and a companion book for, for the person using right, it as well. Right, right. Um, the next one is Day Cape. Right. So this is a planner, basically, and it helps give kids um, an understanding of what's going to be happening in okay. the day. Now, what can happen for children who have um, who are on the spectrum? Sometimes they need a routine. They need to know what's going on, and if they don't understand what's going on or they don't expect it, it can be very frustrating and upset them. And so this is a way to help them say, okay, this is when I'm doing this. This is when I'm doing this. And it can help ease that frustration. Is this then scheduled or can you interact on that one? Um, this one is you put in the schedule. And actually, okay. for higher functioning, they can put in their own schedule. That's okay. Cool. I liked those little notes that popped up. That's why right. I wondered, like, are you sending those in real time or do they, you schedule them to pop up? You, I think you schedule them to pop up. Gotcha. Also Another way to support students with challenging behaviors is the use of text to speech. It is not uncommon for students to exhibit challenging behaviors when faced with academic work that is challenging. One way to alleviate some of the stresses of academic work and to support students' positive behaviors is through the use of text to speech. Text to speech removes a trigger and or a barrier of academic task and thus assists in avoiding possible behavior implications. It facilitates greater independence and decreases stigma. Let's take a look at text-to-speech. Web accessibility perspectives, text-to-speech. Some people can't see the text on the screen. Fortunately, computers can convert text-to-speech. It's technology that many people who are blind have been relying on for years. But it's also important for many people with dyslexia and very useful for people with difficulty reading text. As well as some people who just like to multitask. But for this to work, websites and apps have to be properly coded, which has the added benefit of helping search engines index websites' contents better. Web accessibility essential for some, useful for all. Visit w3.org slash WAI slash perspectives for more information on text-to-speech. Reminder devices. Reminder devices such as vibrating watches or interval timers are great supports for students who are easily distracted 
or who lose focus during lessons. They prompt students to refocus on the task at hand. They allow students to be more independent and they require less involvement of the teacher. Reminder devices also assist educators during interval recording and interventions that are delivered on intervals. Let's take a look at a reminder device. Visual timers. Visual timers allow students to see the passage of time via visual signals. Examples include sand timers, timers in which colored dials disappear as time passes, and bubble timers. Let's take a look at several visual timers. I encourage you to turn the volume up on your computer as the audio quality is poor. Hi guys, I am Melissa from Austin and Sensors and today I'm going to talk to you about timers. Timers are the visual tools used for the Census Tract of Special Education classes. The main timer I use to help with activities is recording from my classroom. It's from um, onlinestopwatch.com, it's all free. You can set up any time you want, and then just press start, and then you'll watch as the time goes down. That will change. And you can set up two minutes, you can do it for a three minute cleanup, or I do it for a 15 minute rotation time. And that helps because students and staff know how much time is left to gauge the work time before we rotate. I also use a lot of fun timers, and I have the basic uh, you know, three minute timer, and that will go off real deep. And then I found some of these um, fun timers that are the, the gel ones. So this is just a one minute timer I got from Kaiso Japan, which is like a dollar space here in Southern California. And so the bees go down, the kids like it. So I use these at work summer. So I'll sit there and like, oh my gosh, let's say you can finish the worksheet ready. And I just leave it on the table as a separate incentive while the whole group center is still going. This is a similar one, this is a bigger one. And it's a five minute timer. So as you flip it, the gel will go down. And these are just fun different timers for students. You can use this, you know, um, go ahead and take a break. And it's a soothing beat. These are more soothing and sensory timers. All this could be just the basic timer that will go off, you know, oh, time to clean up. And so timers really make a difference in my classroom, but the main one I use at all times is this one. This is what I use for playtime when they all earn it. This is what I use for work centers or snack time or, you know, whatever whole group activities we're doing. Because it doesn't only help the students, it helps the staff. So when I'm running my center, I say, oh, I only have one minute left. I'm not going to pull out a whole new worksheet, but I'm going to give them a simple task to complete. So they're maximizing their time, but you're not wasting time. And then, there's no reason why you run behind or the center is more than the other one. Everyone's on the same page. So let me show you, you know, what it sounds like. I have um, 
surround sound in my classroom. So it's great because I um, can play it and say when it time goes off, that goes through my class. So this is just, one. this is the timer I do because it's visually um, available to every student in one classroom. And it also has to be the auditory uh, cue that will go off. So that's when I might say, okay, get your working card, so if you earn it, you the next table. And I just like this because it really helps keep everyone on page and organized. So these are just a few of the timers we use. There's no right or wrong timer. I think the more timers, the better. I have more in my classroom. Um, these, these are just the different ones I want to show you today. So thanks for coming to watch about how I use timers in my classroom. Um, be sure to check back next week on my blog, AustinInvestments.com, to see any new videos. Thank you so much. I have shown you only a sampling of ways technology can be used in behavior management. Given the pace at which technology evolves, new behavior management tools and resources are being created regularly.